everybody. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Berry, and as mentioned earlier, I am the vi current vice president of the Real Estate Industry Association of PNG. And my day job is business development manager for Raku 37 Limited. So today I'm speaking on behalf of the president, Mr. Mike Quinn, as he was unable to join us here today due to other commitments and lay. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to who we are as the REIA PNG. So REIA PNG is the Real Estate Industry Association of PNG, and it's an incorporated association for firms and individuals involved in the real estate industry across Papua New Guinea. We advocate honesty and integrity in real estate dealings and subscribe to a code of ethics and annual auditing for real estate agents of their trust funds. Membership of the association is voluntary and there is a small fee attached to, to joining. In 2006, we altered our constitution and name and became the Real Estate Industry Association. This enabled people who were working in the real estate industry, but who were not real estate agents, to also become members of our association and subscribe to our code of ethics and ethos. This included self-managed property owners, valuers, architects and draftsmen, builders and developers, banks and super fund managers, accountants, lawyers, and many, many other um, industries. A strong emphasis of the REIA PNG is training and through an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with the Real Estate Institute of Queensland, we offer regular real estate training courses which are tailored specifically to the PNG industry. While these courses are open to anyone, we do offer a substantial discount to REIA PNG members. So it's definitely in your best interests if you're interested in training to register. This year, we recently completed the first round of training courses which were conducted at the Crown Plaza here in Port Moresby by um, REIQ trainer, Mr. Malcolm Riley in April. We had a pretty good turnout from a diverse range of companies and are looking to run a second training period commencing October 22nd in both Port Moresby and Ley. Once we have confirmed our timetable, we will be adding additional information to our website. We encourage all attendees here to take advantage of these exceptional training opportunities in order to upskill yourself and your staff. Okay, so the topic of discussion um, that I'm going to be talking about is Port Moresby's residential market and where it is currently and looking ahead. Okay, here we go. Port Moresby has experienced many challenges and growing pains in its rapid growth and development, which has resulted in numerous negative side effects to the growth of the primary housing market across all sectors and demographics. All the way from the grassroots extending up to the high-end housing markets, both rental and sale. Many PNG businesses, whom landlords rely on to rent properties for their staff from, have been affected negatively by a number of these side effects, such as completion of the LNG development, a restriction of foreign exchange for purchase of building and construction materials, and the constantly increasing costs of doing business. They have had to scale back their expenditure by either reducing staff, reducing staff rental allowance budgets, just to keep their heads above water in order to remain viable. Wages have also remained mostly stagnant, which has meant an overall decline in rental prices across the sector and decreased occupancies in high-end units as employers are trying to stretch an already thin housing budget across a rising cost of living and cost of doing business. 
The residential, commercial and industrial markets have all shifted from one of low inventory, high prices and high demand to one of high inventory, lower prices and lower demand. Now, Port Moresby has become a renter's market as there are many vacancies across all sectors of Port Moresby's real estate industry. This has primarily been due to overdevelopment of both commercial and residential units by developers who anticipated that the LNG boom would continue indefinitely. And guess what? The market has responded accordingly by giving renters the opportunity to shop around for both larger units, units in better locations, and it's also given them the ability to negotiate prices with prospective landlords. Many companies across Port Moresby have also started passing housing cost responsibilities back onto their employees, thereby hoping to make the employees more responsible for co their costs and in effect forcing them to become more economical in finding value in a property rental. Gone are the days of being able to scrape by as a lazy landlord, cutting corners on maintenance, someone who doesn't invest capital back into the property, but expects annual rental review increases in line with CPI. Now, in order to be a successful landlord, it's paramount to understand that the best way to retain tenants is by initiating preventative maintenance on their house on their units and houses and doing their best to ensure that tenants don't want to move out by providing a clean and safe unit or house for them to rent. This is the best way to secure good tenants and keep them. With the current state of the market though and overall business confidence being quite low, this means that to avoid tenants moving out and being left with a portfolio of vacant units or houses, many landlords are having to consider maintaining their rentals at either the same price as the previous year or actually offering their long-term tenants a, a rental discount just to keep them there for an, an additional year. Unfortunately, this is becoming increasingly difficult to sustain when the costs of being a landlord in Port Moresby are not decreasing. Port Moresby has some of the most expensive costs associated with being a landlord, with many additional costs that landlords overseas are simply not aware of due to the mature and inadequately maintained infrastructure and utilities here in PNG, while most overseas countries enjoy stable power supply, regular uninterrupted water supply and a reliable police force in safe communities. In Port Moresby it is necessary to not only maintain your asset as in your your house or your property but to also provide backup power, backup water, air conditioning, permanent on-site security and Usually, it's the landlord that has to incur the costs associated with maintaining all of these added costs. Landlords have also been subject to take on further workload and staff to satisfy new compliance and procedure requirements, as well as increased charges. Recently, the IRC has moved to enforce stamp duty fees on leases as a means to increase revenue for the government. This has ad added additional costs to the landlord and tenants as a bank check now needs to be raised to make payments to the IRC. The time and effort now taken up in additional work that needs to be done in making stamp duty submissions, following up calls to the IRC, repeat visits to the IRC to collect the stamp leases, all adds significant cost. NCDC has also placed additional onerous costs onto landlords to bear the burden of maintaining a perception of Port Moresby as an extremely safe and clean city. Over recent years, 
we have seen the outlawing of razor wire just before the South Pacific Games. And now this year, um, there has been a restriction on cladding fencing on main arterial roads as part of the lead up to APEC. This is adding significant costs to landlords and other individual compound owners. Certainly, the use of steel picket fencing and palisade fencing is reducing the graffiti. However, effective policing of existing building codes requiring property owners to remove graffiti would have been just as effective and significantly cheaper for landlords. We all want graffiti gone, but there are other more effective ways of dealing with it than just removing fencing. Only yesterday, I was driving over the, the Poroparina freeway pretty slowly due to all the construction hold-up traffic and noticed that NCDC rangers were in the process of removing fencing from her whole award strip demonstration school, leaving the school wide open to just anybody being able to enter the school grounds. Graffiti doesn't happen because of the type of fencing. It tends to be done by youth who are either bored with no social community involvement and pride in their city. Perhaps NCDC could pass on the costs of cleanup onto the paint companies who sell the spray cans, or try and reduce tagging by introducing legislation that prohibits the sale of spray cans to people below a certain age, or requiring that all spray canisters sold are water soluble, enabling an easy cleanup. Perhaps another option would be to embrace street art culture, similar to metropolitan cities such as Melbourne, therefore providing a safe area, encouraging artists to recognise and remember the unique art, history and cultural values Papua New Guinea has to offer the world, thereby acting as a tourism draw. Finally, an educational campaign to the people that, of the city that graffiti will not be tolerated. And this would help make communities feel proud of their city and want to share it with other tourists, which will definitely help after APEC. Port Moresby has a very lofty goal to be seen as the jewel of the South Pacific by other Pacific nations and also to the Asian market. But if we can't get many of these basics sorted, how can we hope to sparkle? NCDC has also been putting up land tax, garbage collection rates, PNG Power has recently put up the price of electricity tariffs, and Iteranu has increased the cost of water and sewerage. These factors, along with annual land rental costs, GST, group tax, company tax, wages, security, new fencing costs, all make being a landlord a very costly business. Now, I don't want you to think that it's all doom and gloom in the property sector, but I just wanted to emphasize that it's very important to look to the future beyond APEC, to really see where Port Moresby will rank internationally. Because if there's no immediate stimulus after APEC, then further market declines can be expected and we will continue to see a slowdown in, this, in the development of residential and commercial properties. This is why it's so important to be aware of the many unwritten issues that landlords have to deal with and how everything happening in the PNG economy is affecting the most important foundation of modern society, the home, because everyone needs a place to call home. Recently, there has been a boom in lower cost housing developments. Some such as Edai Town, some of the Red Sea housing, affordable housing. And this has all been in a push to bring house prices down. However, something to consider is, are these lower cost options still actually attainable for the average Papua New Guinean? Many banks seem to be very risk averse towards providing loans for residential properties now, and home prices still seem inflated. If potential homeowners find it difficult to borrow money from the banks to purchase these lower affordable homes, 
then this puts a significant roadblock in front of future housing developments and commercial developments getting off the ground. PNG's population is expected to grow from 8 million plus that it currently is to over 20 million by 2050. So that's only 32 years to go. This bank reluctance to fund new or existing housing purchases has arisen primarily because of their perception of the sector's oversupply and the inability of borrowers to maintain debt servicing if their jobs are at risk. Second tier lenders, such as super funds and NAS fund, are also restrained by the same outlook. An individual who may want to buy a house and draw down on their NAS fund entitlements needs to put down a higher deposit to help keep mortgage costs down. But more importantly, they need to understand the risk of debt default if they do, heaven forbid, lose their jobs, which could ultimately lead to the foreclosure of their house. This is because the impact of from the second LNG project with Total will not actually be as significant as the initial Exxon project as all of the roads, hotels, commercial and residential buildings, sports and conference facilities and highways have all been completed around Port Moresby and also a number, most of the contractors that are coming for working on the Total site will be housed at the campsite so they'll be very self-sufficient there. Herein lies the risk of any property investment. Your ability to understand the cues and the clues in the news, that rhymed, and the potential impact on your money. So please tread carefully as money can be easily lost. Um, I'd just like to close off um, by just um, uh, talking about the Real Estate Industry Association of PNG's Code of Ethics. Under all is the land, under its wise utilization and widely spread ownership depend the survival and growth of free institutions and of our civilization. We should recognize that the interests of the nation and its citizens require the highest and best use of the land. We should also require the creation of adequate housing, the building of functioning cities, the development of productive industries and farms, and the preservation of a healthy environment as a national priority. On behalf of the REIA PNG, I would like to thank House Place for putting on another fantastic event. And thank you, Tom, for giving us this opportunity to speak. And thank you, everybody, for your time. If anybody has any further questions with regards to the real estate industry of Port Moresby, or would like to find out more information on our upcoming training in October, please feel free to contact one of the many members of our association who are presenting here. So we have a number of organizations like Strickland Real Estate, Century 21, Ray White, uh, The Professionals, and also you can check out our website, which is in the process of currently being redeveloped, www.reia.org.pg. Thank you.